Hey guys, welcome to our exotic garden here in the southern Gulf Islands off the uh, southwest coast of British Columbia, Canada. And uh, I'm going to do an update video for you. Uh, people that haven't seen my videos before and you want to grow a tree fern, I'm going to show you how to look after a tree fern in the dry months. And we are in the dry months now. It is May and uh, extremely dry here on the southern Gulf Islands. So I water this thing every day. And I water it by hand. I mean, some people like to have uh, automatic irrigation. We have some in our back garden, but this tree fern, I'm the, I'm the irrigation. So the key to keeping a grief, uh, tree fern happy in this climate, first of all, you've got to choose the right species. This is Dixonia antarctica. So the common name is Tasmanian tree fern or man fern. So this one's native to uh, parts of Australia and Tasmania. Uh, this particular species was actually imported uh, from Tasmania in September 1991, and I acquired it from the Palm Society uh, a good friend of mine in the Palm Society, I'm also in the Palm Society, uh, back in 1994. So I planted this here in April 1994. So this is last year's fronds. This is an evergreen plant here in this uh, growing zone on Salt Spring Island. And this is the new flush. Every year, every spring, it puts out a new flush. So when I water this, I take this uh, nozzle here and water the center. So the whole trunk is basically made up of roots and uh, it soaks it right down like a wick. It soaks right into it like a wick. So water the inner crown and uh, you can soak the trunk down too and I water around the ground I mean if you want you can miss the fronds but I'm not going to do that because it's in the full-on sun and I don't want them to burn and at this latitude it's amazing years ago this thing used to grow in the shade and a bunch of big trees came down now it's growing in full-on hot sun and uh, it's okay here I haven't really seen it uh, burn and maybe it's tinged a little bit discolored but it used to be a little bit darker green, but it hasn't. It certainly hasn't burned. So by uh, midsummer, these outer fronds are going to dry, start to brown. I'll cut them off. But like I say, they're replaced with these new uh, fronds here, and they're an absolutely beautiful uh, plant. This one here has just about six feet of trunk on it, and uh, it's going to keep on growing. And um, I was going to say, if you want to fertilize it too, fertilize it through the center of the crown. Try not to touch the new fiddleheads when they emerge because it can actually turn them black. It's not good for them. So just enjoy them from a distance and photograph them. Sometimes the hummingbirds like to take the fuzz off of them. So try one of these in your own garden. This is Dixonia antarctica. Uh, this is a true zone 9a uh, plant. And like I say, this one's been here now for over 27 years, going to its 28th uh, year. And it's, uh, it's one of my favorite plants in the garden. We have lots of smaller ones in the garden but this is our biggest. We also have Saithia cooperi, which is the Australian tree fern, and that is less hardy. So there you go. That's what she's looking like today, folks. In May on Salt Spring Island, we're getting, uh, what is it? Uh, getting closer to the end of May. Another, another uh, 11 days or so, 10 days will be the end of May. Thanks for watching. Cheers.